Sarah Albad, we hear from Horse Racing Nation, joined by Matthew DeSantis. And Matthew, I'm so excited that this is the last time that we're going to be talking on camera because we finally get to meet in person at the Breeders' Cup. And yeah. what a place for our, our first in-person uh, a greeting. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's been almost a year since we first uh, met each other online and you came and helped me. Uh, handicap some races at aqueduct and i i feel like we need to take a a picture and do kind of how it started how it's going type of a thing uh because we both have had a lot of big uh, changes over the last year so it's it's been exciting and yeah i can't wait to be there in keeneland meet you meet a whole bunch of other people uh and uh, it should be just a beautiful weekend as well i mean you could not ask for better weather uh for early november in kentucky so this is going to be a real treat to meet you and uh, i think see a very memorable weekend that's the hope. I mean, uh, for a first Breeders' Cup, I'm excited that it's this one with not only a superstar like Flightline, but also all of these other horses that we've been following and talking about all year. And I feel like I gave you the other big one. We were going to be talking about the Breeders' yeah. Cup distaff. And um, not to spoil too much of the thunder, but I know that you and I have, have ended up on the same horse in here. But this is this is a good group, even though it is a short field for the distaff. What are your thoughts overall on the field? Yeah, it's a very salty field, uh, and this has been one of my favorite, maybe my favorite division to follow, actually, over the last year. I just think there's so much talent at the top end. Uh, and, you know, obviously one of the horses that's not running, uh, who is not running in the Philly Mare Sprint either is Latruska. And she was kind of a lot of people's gateway into this division last year. She was such a superstar. But then you saw this evolution of the Malafat, Clarier, and search results from three to four years old. They just put on a show this year, I think, as four-year-olds. I was so impressed by them. And then, of course, you had this super promising and exciting three-year-old crop this year with Nest, with Secret Oath, with Kathleen O, a horse that you and I really liked a lot early in the year, the Shug McGahey horse, who won a ton of st uh, stakes races down at Gulfstream Park. Echo Zulu was in that Kentucky Oak. That was a really big race a lot of excitement there and, and nest has taken that step to be the dominant three-year-old and now we're going to see her run against older I, I think this is a very exciting race uh for that alone and, and i think there's some other exciting horses that i might like a little bit more than you potentially uh it, that are also maybe x factors in this race well, with Latruska out, it kind of uh, brings the early speed into a little bit of a question. I think that question is answered more towards the outside in this race in both search results and society. I know that a lot of people have kind of uh, jumped aboard the society bandwagon after her her couple of dominant wins. I... I'm not quite there yet, but I do respect her early speed presence, although I think some people are kind of convinced that she'll be low in speed, and I just don't really see that happening with a horse like Search Results, who was able to take it to Latruska early, mm -hmm. and even though we've seen Latruska tail off, she was still fast within uh, the early quarter to uh to the half of a race so i mean to go with her early on and then survive and put her away i think that you at least have to take search results seriously as one can, that can go fast early and and survive and hang around absolutely I, in many ways I, i've said this i think to you actually and to others i think search results holds the whole key to this race if because so, society is going to be the early speed and, and society is going to want to go out in the lead. The only time she really wasn't on the lead was that coaching club of America race where she stumbled out of the gate and, and kind of had to make up a ton of ground. So, and that did not work out well. And otherwise it, she, her running lines look a lot like echo Zulu, you know, just a lot of ones straight across the board. I mean, she likes being out there. The question is, will search results let her get not an easy leap, but I mean, the question is how much does search results press Right? Is, are they going to do what they did at the Ogden Phipps, basically, where search results and Latruska went out 15 lengths clear of the field and just set an incredibly hot pace? Or does search results is search results a little bit more tactical, sitting maybe off the flank, maybe a length back? I mean, I don't think you know society's not going to have the sort of lead that she had at the Cotillion at Parks, where she was just five lengths clear of the field the whole way. But I think the the amount of pressure that search results decides to put on uh, society is going to be a huge key to this race because the other factor is the other favorites, Malathat, Clarier, Nest, they like to close. And so if you have a hot pace to close into, that sets up beautifully for your big favorites. Whereas if society and search results both kind of have a nice little 
you know, front running effort, but it's not pushed too hard, you know, then it might end up being the two of them deciding things out because there might not be the speed to close into by some of those other horses. And of those three shorter prices that um, need a little bit more to go their way as far as race tactics go, I do think that your your favorite is in Nest, um, the three-year-old taking on older company here. I think that she does have the most tactical speed out of mm-hmm. the other two. I mean, I think that um, what we saw from Malatha and her losing effort in the coaching club American Oaks last year, uh, she was put in a position that she didn't want to be in at all. And I don't think that there was – there was nothing else she could have done. It was such a short field. Uh, I mean, Johnny Velasquez had to make a tough decision from the rail. And I think that ultimately he made the right one, but, and he gets the rail again. And here with these three horses, when you're looking for them to have the setup, if things are going smoothly up front for search results and society, I think the one that you would want next in that scenario would probably be Nest who Really, I mean, I, I wasn't the biggest fan in the world early on this year, but wow, we have seen a lot from her lately. We certainly have, and, and that makes two of us. I, I was not overly, you know, I was not overwhelmed by her first effort as a three-year-old. I thought, you know, people were grouping her with Kathleen O and Secret Oath and Echo Zulu, and I was like, mm, really? And and then she ran a really nice race at the Kentucky Oaks, obviously finishing second that day, and then just took a huge step uh, and went up, you know, going up to New York and running those races at uh, Saratoga and Belmont at Aqueduct and really separated herself from the rest of the class. I think the question that I have with Nest and the reason I'm looking past her, I agree with everything you said. She is much better tactical speed than Malathat and Clarier, and so she should be sitting more of a mid-pack trip rather than a deep closer type of a trip. But honestly, I'm not sure how good some of the horses she's been beating lately really are. I think Secret Oath is just tired. Uh, Secret Oath does not look like the same horse that ran in the Arkansas Derby, does not look like the same horse that ran uh, early this year at Oaklawn. And when I saw her at the Cotillion in person, she's an incredible specimen to look at. She's a big, hulking uh, filly, but she just looked tired. And that race, was she just looked tired. And I just don't know how good that is. And then you get past her, it's like, who's the next best horse she's beaten? Like, Goddess of Fire? Nostalgic? Like, we're, we're we're kinda, you know, eh, starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel there. I mean, and so it's it's not that. And, and now she's going up against the big three of Clarier, uh, Malathat and search uh, results. And so that's, that's a tough task for her. And uh, admittedly, she's done everything right. She's blown out the competition that she's faced, which is what you want to see. It's not as if she's been squeaking by. But I do think it's fair to question just how good some of the horses that she's been beating are and the fact that she's maybe not as battle-tested lately as a horse like Malathat and Clarier, who have just been duking it out against each other for the better part of two years. And I think we saw so much so in the three-year-old year for all of these horses that Malafat was just the dominant one and mm. these other two search results and Clarier, um, I mean, they they ran their races and they were good, but they weren't Malafat good. And now this year, <laughs> we've seen we've seen things change a little bit as uh, Clarier has progressed. And I think that these three horses were kind of the ones that, um, you know, for a while I was like, I'm never getting this right when I pick which one I want to actually bet on. And it was <laughs> yeah. always so frustrating. And it's like, no matter who I pick, it's, it's not the right one, but at least this time you and I are interested in the one that's the better price. And that's Clarier. Yes. And I think that if you, if you go back to her last race where she ran a very dull effort and, and it seems like you and I can make enough excuses as to why with the agitation in the gate and not breaking well. And she, she just, it wasn't her day. She just threw in a bad race and uh, she wasn't feeling it. And I, I, that happens. I mean, we all have bad days as human beings. It it (laughs) happens. Um, But I wonder had she won that race, would she be the favorite coming into this one? Oh yeah. I I think that's, that's a good question. I I think, It'd be hard. I mean, it would be like a nine to five, two to one type of situation, maybe between her and Nest. I mean, I do feel like if she had won that, then the narrative really would have been how Clarier had turned the tables because Clarier had gotten the better amount of fat two consecutive races. It seemed as if she had turned the corner and you just thought, OK, now she and, and Asmussen had teased this early in the year. He said she's going to be better at four. She's training lights out. He's so high on her. And so that confidence because I felt like you, I never picked the right one between those three. And, uh, but I was, his confidence led me to clear air, maybe a little bit before everybody else. And I just thought, I, 
think this horse can do it. And and she did. And she actually did a decent price the first time uh, out. I think it was maybe nine to two or something along those lines. But um, but I, I think you're getting an honest price on her. I think there's going to be a lot of money on Nest because that's kind of the hot filly that everybody is very excited about. Uh, and then people are going to look at Malafat's running lines recently and and understandably say this is an incredibly consistent horse that just doesn't really turn in a bad effort ever and uh, and and money's going to go there as well so i, I think you're going to get a very honest price on clarier i think as you mentioned fractious in the gate as we said she scraped her tongue as well that can be really agitating to a horse obviously when she's trying to run so i think there were plenty of excuses there that last time out and i i think you know, by all accounts, she's been training lights out, and I expect to. I think a lot of Asmussen's barn this particular Breeders' Cup. I think he's got a lot of really live runners, so I, I like Clarier in the spot. Yeah, he definitely seems like he's ready to fire not only here but in other spots throughout the Breeders' yes. Cup as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, interesting. And, 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 and yeah, just to kind of maybe put a, a button on that. On the flip side, Todd Pletcher is somebody who brings everybody and their cousin to the breeders cup. I mean, he brings a huge contingent every year. It's important to point out Todd Pletcher out of the major trainers has the lowest winning percentage, 8% at the breeders cup of any of the major trainers, whether it's Baffert, Asmussen, Brown, Graham motion, Aiden O'Brien, Charlie. I mean, it doesn't matter. You go down the list. He only, he's, he doesn't win a lot. And so that's why I just sometimes I'm a little worried about Todd Pletcher on big days because he brings these huge contingents and they, they don't really fire traditionally. And so I, I'm just a little skeptical. I mean, he's got the two favorites here uh, in Malafat and Nest, but I, I just, I'm looking to clear air there. Well, you read my mind because that's exactly what I was going to bring up. Oh, next. Okay. So that, that, that stat that you had pointed out recently yeah. with Todd Pletcher, because I think it's definitely worth noting when you're looking at the two shortest prices in what is a fairly compact field. I know there's a lot of Malafat fans out there. I feel like with her, um, I mean, obviously warrants a ton of respect, but she's not the kind to open up on a field. She gets right. the job done, but she's not winning traditionally by huge margins most of the time. Whereas what we've seen from Nest is that she just blows the doors off of whoever she's yes. facing. And so I think sometimes when you have these bigger days where it's more of the general public playing, if they go, um, well, not the general public is watching a replay, but the casual fan perhaps <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Is, is looking at, okay, um, maybe a show where they they show the last race of these two. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking just very quickly at, at what Nest has done without a number or uh, a gauge of what she's been facing, yeah. I mean, those wins look more impressive oh, yeah. than what we've seen from Malathat. So um, I get I get the Nest love is there. Yeah. And Malathat, is, she's a grinder. I mean, she just mm -hmm. grinds. She's a very blue-collar horse. You kind of have to be on her the whole way. And uh, it reminds me a little bit, actually, of a horse that uh, I'm sure you'll talk about as well rebels romance uh in the turf that's a horse that's also kind of a grinder like just it doesn't have that like wow like sort of turn of foot and doesn't put fields away but just kind of gets there every time um but i i think malafat yeah is is a horse that it, you're not just gonna see i mean honestly her highlights are the duels with clarier that's what the the highlight is it's just these two horses both slowly but surely wearing everybody else down and getting to the front and so um it, it, that's why i think it all does come back to search results how much this horse decides to push the pace uh and you know do you sacrifice yourself maybe for the sake of the pace i mean this is what we saw last year at the distaff everybody sacrificed themselves nobody wanted to let latruska get an easy lead Everybody went out and it was just cannibalism. I mean, nobody, everybody just wiped each other out. And what ends up happening, Marche Lorraine, Dunbar Road, but also noteworthy, Malafat and Clarier right there, three, four in that distaff last year, less than a length back. So they absolutely capitalized on it. I don't think they're going to get that type of pace this year, but if they get that pace, they've shown they can do it at this level. Absolutely. And I guess we should just talk about the rest of the field because we probably much, should, but <laughs> there's, there's, there's not much left. So we might as well touch on them. Um, yeah. A horse like Blue Stripe. I know uh, yeah. my my colleague Ed DeRosa is someone that you uh, are familiar with and you know that he <laughs> is uh, ripe and ready for those out there takes. And he actually picked Blue Stripe in this race mm -hmm. um, because I just I know that he's looking for a price outside of Nest, sure. and I think more more often than not, he's more attracted to the uh, the odds than the actual uh, talent or capability of the horse. But 
Hey, I mean, we've seen crazier things happen. Upsets do happen. This horse yeah. is invading from California. Um, I, I tend to not equate the California form with what we kind of have seen from these East Coast horses just because yeah. of, you know, not only the numbers, but the level of competition. I uh, This isn't one that I'm considering, but let's say there is some sort of wild pace. Maybe this one shows up for third and you, you have a pretty hefty trifecta. Yeah. I think that's a very reasonable outcome of what you just laid out because a Royal ship or I'm not Royal ship. I should say Royal uh, blue stripe will sit a very uh, moderate position. We'll sit mid pack and, and we'll let, I mean, won't be too far back, but won't be too sucked up into the lead. You know, should get a really ideal trip in that regard. The horse, by all accounts, is training lights out, uh, has looked really good on the training track. But as somebody else pointed out, uh, I think the Paddock Prince pointed this out today, uh, that it's a shocking development that the best horses in the world are all training really well. Uh, you know, it is And they all look things. good. And they all look good. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. And so like, it is one of those where I do kind of laugh at the, at the clockers and the, the, you know, the people who really obsess over the works this time of year. And I'm like, well, what do you expect? Like, they're all going to look great. Uh, and they're all going to work. And if they don't, that's noteworthy. But if, if, but if yes. they do, uh, I expect a bunch of like minute and two, five furlong works from these horses. Like that's what I come to expect. Now, somebody doesn't look good. We heard Latruska last year. There was a lot of buzz about that workout. Brandon's my lawyer kind of getting in the way and all this other stuff. And there was a lot of hoopla, but yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I, I think blue stripe could sit a good trip can absolutely, you know, jump up and get a piece of that. Uh, trifecta of some of the, some of the pace falls apart. Um, and, and so I, I think is a logical horse to potentially look at if you're trying to get past, if you're trying to look at a double digit price, um, you know, the horse that I think we should also just kind of, we mentioned a little bit, but I'm interested in your thoughts is uh, secret oath. I mean, obviously this was a horse that was, you know, ran against the boys, uh, was, was, you know, ran in that Arkansas Derby, ran in the Preakness, I, like I said, my opinion is she's tired, but I, I'm interested. Do you think she might potentially be sitting on a, a better race and a better effort than maybe we've seen the last couple of times out? Well, I think that you and I look at the campaign that she's had and look at um, what she was producing as far as her her runs and and the the big move that she would make in these races that was very eye catching, where she would kind of swoop the group and mm -hmm. go and have that closing kick. And um, I think that we've kind of seen that tail off a bit. And so yeah. people like you and I that are more visual people um, with with such a full campaign that she has had, dancing all of these dances and, and getting beat over and over again by horses like Nest and others going forward, um, if they're not at their absolute best, I would, I would like to see them take a break, but yeah. her not absolute best is kind of still hitting the board in these huge races. Yeah. So if you're her trainer, I mean, maybe you are faced with this kind of dilemma where you're like, well, my horse keeps running well, they keep training well, what yeah. am I going to do? Um, it's, yeah. it's not what you or I would do, but we're, we're, you know, talking into our headsets and we're not out there, you know, at 5am <laughs> with a stopwatch. So, right. Right. you know, my, my opinion on that is really just my opinion. Um, yeah. and you can take it with a grain of salt or really listen to it, whatever you want to do with it. But I think that the secret oath that we saw earlier this year, um, versus the, the performances that we've seen from her lately, I think that um, she is tailing off um, and is not necessarily one that I'm considering as far as I feel as though she's sitting on a really big best effort. And I think yeah. that's what would need to happen to make her competitive in a spot like this. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you look at the speed figures as well. I mean, she she would have to make a jump uh, from her last effort, you know, four, five, six point jump from her last effort from a buyer speed figure standpoint to to really be competitive here. And so yeah, I agree with you. The burst is not there. That kind of awe-inspiring, wow, she's circling the field, uh, which we even saw against the boys. Like, we saw her put that on. I mean, we even saw that to some extent in the Preakness. So she was showing that burst until kind of midway through the campaign, and then it just kind of disappeared. And she just, that became a slower move uh, that she made. And it just didn't seem, like I said, visually, like it was uh, as impressive as it used to be. So uh, I know when I was at the um, at the Pennsylvania Derby Day for the Cotillion, I was joking with some buddies, you know, Dwayne Lucas loves to run his horses. And after the uh, cotillion was over, my buddy looked at me, he goes, eh, maybe she, there's an allowance race she can run next week somewhere. You know, he just, you know, Dwayne likes to keep them, keep them on the track. So, uh, you know, but you never know. I mean, they, she can run herself back into shape to some extent. I mean, it, you, we've seen that from horses, so I, I don't see it happening, but uh, it's the Breeders' Cup. Crazier things have happened for sure.
And I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fans for her. You know, yes. this is something that I talked about when I talked about the classic with Ed. Is that there are these horses that people have um, really developed this fan base for uh, mm-hmm. Rich Strike, Hot Rod Charlie, others like that, and and that's great. And that's a part of racing is you want to be a fan of the game. You know, yes. we can analyze all these races to death, but at the end of the day, I want to be wowed. Like they're not they're not sitting behind me on the wall because you know I, I talked about the race once. It's because it was a moving and exciting. <laughs> Uh, atmosphere and, and something that you know I'm incredibly passionate about and I care about. Um, and so to have this fan base for these horses, that's great, but it's also not the most logical at times, too. Right. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, we saw that uh, maybe to a lesser extent with the Kentucky Derby and like some of the odds that were just like befuddling, honestly, at, at the Derby. And you're just like, well, why is happy jack taking money and like you know but people get attracted to a name or a horse or a narrative i mean you're right in the classic there's a bunch of those uh narratives that people just really love and uh, it, similarly in the the distaff i do feel like you have people have their little pets you know people have their their favorites in this race for sure i mean whether it's nest whether it's secret oath whether it's malafac clarier i'd even say there's a group of people who really like search results really like society i mean i think that is a horse that has picked up a lot of fans recently with that effort at charlestown and then the the with the effort at the cotillion the grade one so uh, it, you know it does it feels like you know everybody goes to their camps you know you can everybody looks at their pp it's all they want and then they end up going with their favorites so it's uh it, it is one of those uh races that should be like I said, a lot of fun. I think there's a lot of tactical decisions to be made. Uh, I think it kind of does all come down to what Flavian Pratt decides to do on search results, though. I, I think that is going to hold the key to the race. And just how easy of a lead can society have? If, they, if she can have an easy lead, then wiring the field is not out of question because she's shown a ton of talent and a ton of natural speed. And she's a gun runner. And quite frankly... Sometimes that's all you need to do is just bet gun runners all weekend. And, uh, and, and that, by the way, her win that day kicked off that incredible stretch of five gun runners winning stakes races that day between parks and, uh, Churchill downs. So that was a, a really an incredible day for a gun runner, but, uh, an awesome day for society as well. So should be a great race. And I'm, I'm thrilled that we're both on clear air so we can both have the same rooting interest when we're there in person. Uh, we'll have to go get a selfie with her in the winter circle. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, Matthew, thank you for taking the time to talk about this Breeders' Cup distaff with me. I'm so excited to finally meet you in person. It's yep. only a couple of days away. And um, hopefully in between then I get a couple more hours of sleep because the content <laughs> creation, it never stops. But it's all been a lot of fun and great yep. to hear everybody's opinions, especially yours. Thanks so much, Sarah. So much uh, fun being here and can't wait to meet you as well. <laughs>